guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Leading Edge Cricket Podcast. Summer is near, the podcast is here. Division 1 County Championship Preview coming right up. I'm Rob, this is Rich. We're in matching yellow tops today, which is great. It's all yellow. It's all yellow. Chris Martin would be absolutely loving this. Coldplay <laughs> reference, one minute in. Early, early. How are we going, Rob? Yeah, we're good. We're good. It's it's that time of year where you, you know... It, you play cricket, or if you play cricket from a young age, you kind of get that special feeling as soon as March, mm. April rolls around. You've probably got three jumpers on because it is the start of cricket season. And being a bit older, you're not playing, but you know, it's you're looking forward to the championship season and some Red Bull cricket. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it summed it up perfectly recently where the, uh, the Nottinghamshire team photo from last summer, last summer, won photo of the year because it was snowing whilst they were trying to take their, their team group photo on the, the hallowed green turf at Trent Bridge. So that does sum up this time of year. Rob, you'll be pleased to know I have not attended any indoor nets. Um, apologies. So, but my first net will be very late this year. But I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Cricket season is upon us. 6th of April, Rob. Whoa. We're recording this on the 29th of March, a week or so out. And we're there. We're nearly there. We're just we about are, We there. are nearly there. And We've it's... made it. It is full of excitement and change. Andrew Strauss came in and he's got his Strauss report and he's like, hey, this is the way we need to be. It's, it's like rolling back 20 years and the Aussies were really good and we weren't and we were trying to copy everything we're doing. Yeah. Now we're trying to reinvent the wheel um, yeah. and try and put ourselves in a better position. Not that the fact that we've got a really good test team at the moment and our white ball teams have won World Cups. Irrelevant. We need to reinvent the wheel. And Rich, yeah. there's three big changes that's going into the county championship season this year. Tell me, Rob, tell me, what's the big changes? Mm. Point system. So Ooh. in 2019, they made a change, and the change was around trying to create match-winning pitches, which I'm not mm -hmm. quite sure I understand, but there used to be an increase to eight points for a draw. Now it's come back down to five points. So they're trying mm. to put forward, hey, we need to score our runs better, we need to score our runs faster, and we need to try and win games. The other one being you now need 250 runs to earn a batting point in the first innings rather than 200 and you've got 110 overs to do that. If you're not scoring 250 and 110 overs, there's something seriously going awry here and mm -hmm. everyone in that bucket playing in that game will be expelled from baseball activities going forward because baseball is all about scoring fast runs. Mm -hmm. Hey, exactly. Yeah, you'll be suspended from cricket forever. Um, yeah, the county championship is is, an, is a decent product anyway. But it just we've got to just you've got to try and force those results, haven't you? You don't want to get into that that issue previously of rubbish tracks, just result tracks over in two and a half days. Doesn't matter the score. So, so I like the idea that they are encouraging higher scores with the bat, but also trying to focus on trying to get those. Um, Get those results, get those positive results, get those Baz results. And I wonder how many times we're going to say Baz ball in the build-up to the season. I know. Do you know what? Like, to say we don't like the term... Hate it's, it. It's already in about six times. Hate it. But it, we've had like a little backlog of Baz ball in our head. We just need to get it out this week. Yeah. Apologies to everybody. But by the time we've given you this Division 1 Championship preview, we will be, uh, we'll be out of our system. <laughs> Second yeah, change... Right. Second change, the Cookumbra ball is making an appearance oh. in England. First few rounds of the season, there's going to be a Cookumbra ball in operation. Mm. Um, what, what are your thoughts? What are your takes? I don't really have many takes. It's a cricket ball. So it's a cricket ball. <laughs> it's right. ready, it'll swing. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a bit darker, ready, it'll even swing a little bit more. That's local knowledge on the old good and more balls. Um, yeah, I mean, why not? I, I'm not precious about it. I don't really care too much about this. I think the balls last summer were atrocious, weren't they? They kept having to be chucked to the dogs. Um, so there's no harm in tr changing things around a little bit, see what works better, see what gives a little bit more balance between bat and ball. Yeah, great, well done. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like the fact that it's, you know, this is a tool that you use when you go overseas and play in different countries. Mm. Why not give bowlers a chance to try and learn how to use it a little yeah. bit um, mm. before they go overseas? I think that's a really good idea. Yep. Do I care when it's used during the summer? Not really. I'm just, oh. I think it's a cool idea. I think it's a mm. really simple idea to implement. And you're right, last year's balls were dogs and every single bowler was complaining. Complaining They were like hockey balls, not cricket balls with a C. Mm. Um, final point, and it's not a change, but it is Ashes year, which always it makes is. things extra spicy, extra special. Mm -hmm. um, what difference does that make going into the season? Ooh, good question. It's just more focus, more pressure, isn't it? More pressure on people to perform in those six or seven county championship rounds before the Aussies arrive. 
Um, and we've got a World Test Championship first in June. So the Aussies have got a lovely warm-up game against India before mm. they, they, they get underway with the Ashes in England. So, yeah, I think it's just ultra-focus, ultra-pressure, everybody stepping up. But now the new, the new era, the new dawn of... Brendan McCullum ball, stoked ball, not saying it anymore, Rob. I like it. Um, until the next time I say it. But the, it's all about now being more positive and embracing that and just playing your game. So it's going to be really interesting this summer to see, because obviously last year we were only just seeing Brendan McCullum, Ben Stokes, axis of uh, amazingness. Um, so just let's see how people have responded. They know what it's all about now. They've seen it all last summer. They've seen it over the winter. Positive, positive, positive cricket. Um, who's going to be the players that step up and say, I want to be a bit of that? <laughs> Zach Crawley's defensive technique, apparently. There's nothing wrong with his defensive technique. He He's said he, he doesn't need to work on that. He said he doesn't really need to worry about that. What he needs to do is attack more. That's what Zach said. He so. does. I does. I tell you what, if he's not getting out at the start of this season to Mohamed Abbas tracking him in the third over like the start of last season, there's something wrong and Baz Ball's going in the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, just um, kill county cricket if that's the case. It's nice, you mentioned Andrew Strauss and it is nice that there's been a few little tweaks and changes this year, not much, probably won't, nothing much will change next year, but his big review, I think he was basically trying to hack down a few counties, so that would have meant that this would have taken us less time to do these previews if he did do that. That was the only positive, everything else. Andrew, what are you doing? It's county cricket, you can't get rid of counties. <laughs> Drew Strauss. Um, Rich, get us caught up. What happened last year in the Championship? Whew, well, it was sorry, wasn't it? We, we, look, so we're going to focus on Division 1 today. We won't get to Division 2. We'll get to that next time, and we will do it. But Surrey, Champions, Lancashire. It was nail by and finish, wasn't it? Lancashire in second place. Hampshire, third. Uh, Yorkshire and Gloucestershire were relegated. Yorkshire, how do we say this? We're not going to get into the politics of it, but just a shambles of a county off the field and on the field. It wasn't much better, was it? So they dropped down into Division 2. Uh, up Kem Nottinghamshire, Rob. You are representing Notts there with your uh, end-of-season $10, $10 shirt. Um, nicely done. I, I did also think we are go, both going green and gold, so we are subliminally thinking ashes, ashes, when we got dressed this morning. Um, worryingly, though, Australia rather than England. Yeah, I don't know what's going um, on there. But, yeah, Middlesex joined Notts in the runners-up spot Um in a competitive Division 2, but Division 1 was, was sensational. Surrey from the off were brilliant. We said start of last season, if Surrey are not too impacted by the England call-ups, they're going to be so strong. Um, they're squad list when you look at it. You need a second page. It's just, just the way it is. And that's not because they've just signed a load of randoms. They've just got so many good players coming through the ranks as well. So, yeah, well, well deserved. And it really was a ridiculous end to the season, wasn't it? Going down to the last game, was it between Lancashire and then whether Warwickshire would be relegated or not? And they just survived. Just survived. Was, will, um, but will they this I, year? I'd call, I'd call out as well, all the clubs, if you don't know, have their YouTube channels and stream the games live from 11am yeah. on Thursday, mm. whenever the season starts next Thursday, this Thursday, maybe by the time it's come out. But it's free to watch. Incredible viewing. Go back and watch the watch the game afterwards. There's a five minute highlight show that comes out the next morning. Um, incredible support really through it through those channels. Lots of fans tuning in, particularly when you end up in positions with Shine Shara 3D Bowl into Marnus Labashane. Like the channel was just blowing up. Everyone wanted to watch it. Yeah, exactly. You get on YouTube and you can just flick through, can't you? It's like, oh, what's happening there? Quick, this one. Yeah, it's yeah. nice quality. It's brilliant. I, I do. love that. I'm, I'm Bobby 10 tabs. 10 tabs nice. at the top or however many games are going on. God. And I'm just flicking, flicking. Who's who's playing? Joe Root's facing Jimmy Anderson. Yeah, I'm watching that. You um, are the future. Let's kick into it, Rich. We're going to yeah. work our way through the teams today. Division yep. 1. Mm -hmm. Alphabetical order. I like what you've done. Has there, to be. Right? Has to be. Really we logical can't... way to go, rather than me starting with Nottinghamshire. Um, I was going to say we can't show let's favoritism. Start with, let's start at Essex. <laughs> yeah, we can't show favoritism, Rob. Even though you're wearing a Not shirt, <laughs> and I've got a Not's cap behind me, <laughs> we can't show any favoritism. So yeah, let's get into it. Essex are the team first. So let's go. Right. Um, we're going to just rattle through. We're going to look at last year, how things went as a brief summary. This year, what we're expecting, what changes in place, and then we're going to throw a one to watch for every county. Um, but these ones to watch aren't an obvious like this guy is going to be amazing this season. These are the ones that are on the way. These are the emerging talent that we think that you need to be aware of as the summer gets on the way. And you impress everybody down the pub with your cricket knowledge of the of the random ones. So last year they finished fourth, as we said. Tom Wesley is the captain for County Championship only. Anthony McGrath, ex-Yorkshireman, as coach. Um, 
last year, relatively poor year, I'd say. Rob fourth, but not ever really in contention for a title with home form strangely poor, which is bizarre. Chelmsford is the uh, is the, the the big old place, isn't it? You know, nobody wants to play at Chelmsford on a Tuesday night. And um, the first win came at Chelmsford late June. So again, that's that's not going to give you much of a go, is it? When you've got six or seven rounds of cricket early doors. Simon Harmer, obviously the South African international now. 50 county championship wickets for him last year, fifth time in a row. And Sam Cook, little chef, 51 for him. They started the ball. Sir Alistair Cook, he fell short just of his 1,000 runs. Um, but again, another great season for him. He was the main man. Nick Brown, once again, very steady, as was Tom Westley. A disappointing year for Dan Lawrence, though. Um, 420 runs in his 19 innings and it's probably just worth saying now a lot of what we're going to do going forward is going to be linking into the England test side um, so a lot of players our focus our England watch whatever you want to call it will be looking at how that impacts England and Dan Lawrence last year he went from being the man in possession to nowhere near the team and it's a shame really because he could be potentially quite suited to uh, Brendan McCullum ball um, this year, Rob, they still have Sir Alistair Cook. One more year, one more year at a time. Uh, should also have Dan Lawrence for the whole summer, obviously, due to the young Johnny Bairstow and Harry Brook form for England. Um, Adam Rossington slotted in nicely, didn't he, last year after his move from North Ants. Um, so he's going to be a, a plus up there. But his inclusion in the 11 as a top order player and wicketkeeper uh, kind of encouraged stalwart Adam Wheater to make a decision to retire. Uh, with the ball, duo of Cook, Porter has long performed the now of a spot of a young player in Ben Allison, who made an excellent start to his first class life last year. 12, 12 wickets at 13.4, Rob. I think that's quite a good um, start to your career. Um, also averaged 55 with a bat. One to watch, but he's not the one to watch we put in here, but Ben Allison is a big name. Um, Harmer as well should be available for most of the summer. Um, and joining him as an overseas is Aussie all-rounder Will Sutherland. Six foot five, 23 year old Victorian. Um, he should be arriving in the time for the first game. Shrewd acquisition. You might know a little bit more about him, but he's got so far a first class record of 102 wickets at 24 and 768 runs at 20. So batting a little bit low, but bowling excellent. And he's also captain Victoria. Um, I'll leave it at this. No other new faces. It's going to be really interesting to see if this is going to be a uh, aberration finishing in fourth mid table, or if they're going to be, this is going to be the start of a bit of a run of mid table mediocrity for Essex rather than challenging. For the Will time. Sutherland, yep, cricket family. Dad played for Victoria. Mm -hmm. Sister oh. plays for the Aussie women at the moment. Nice, nice, great Real big cricket family. Essex are a team of two halves. Their batting has not lived up to expectation of the players that's in it, and their bowling mm -hmm. is so consistent, so on the spot every single time. The top six batters out of this team averaged. 18th, the worst top six lineup in the championship last year. Cook and Paul Walters both average over 40. Lawrence Wesley, Critchley, Rosington all average less than 30. That's a big problem for them. They played at a ground that is conducive to taking wickets, um, and that's shown by the fact that their bowling attack was the second best in the league just behind Hampshire's. Uh, mm. Second best average, second best strike rate, fourth best economy. Little Chef. Okay. Now, he is getting on that England radar conversation, England Lions conversation. Eighth in the country for Seamers last year, averaged 16.25 at a strike rate of 44. Um, absolutely fantastic. And it was the best average of a Seamer who had taken 20 wickets in the season. So really, really good from him. Shane Snader, I remember us talking about him at the start of the last year. Netherlands International, you went and saw him while you were in Netherlands playing. Excellent yeah. cricketer, goes about his business doing the thing, but Harmer, you mentioned him, he's a different level of gravy altogether. His wickets came at 20 last year. These are D1 wickets as well. Five, um, seven, five wicket hauls. Matt Parkinson didn't take any. Harmer gets a strike rate of 43 with the ball, Matt Parkinson 72. Now, Parkinson's was a down year, but it goes to show what real... Next level quality is actually able to achieve. I've been grading these teams as I've been going through them, going bat pace and spin. Mm -hmm. Bat, I've put potential. Um, they didn't live up to it last year. They've got good players. They need Dan Lawrence to really step up. Yeah, pace, good slash excellent, and spin, excellent. Really good mm -hmm. bowling side. Need to step up with the bat if they're going to be challenging for the top. 
Yeah, they, they they need some new blood coming through in the batting, really, don't they? It's a very it's an aging lineup. You know, Tom Wesley's been on the England radar allegedly yeah. for years. Nick Brown, well, he played, didn't he, as well? Nick Brown, the same. Um, Dan Lawrence, there or thereabouts. Paul Walters getting on a little bit. Alistair Cook is about the same age as it feels like. Um, but he's a bit better. Um, so yeah, it's a team that's going to it's going to batting and bust, isn't it? Uh, the bowling attack's decent, but it's just whether or not the batting can put up enough to defend. Sam Cook, you've mentioned him, Rob. He's the one to watch. I've put. We could have gone with uh, Ben Allison, but Sam Cook, 217 first class wickets, an average of there or thereabouts 20. He's 25 now. Matty Potts last year started the summer sensationally, and then he worked his way into the uh, the, the Test lineup against New Zealand, didn't he? That wasn't expected. Matty Potts at the start of the year, is he on England watch? Don't know. Wickets, wickets, wickets. Forced himself in there. Not saying uh, Sam Cook will, will do exactly the same, but there's a chance. So maybe Sam Cook, if I had to call one, I'd say he is the potential Matty Potts for this summer. Let's roll. Let's head down to Hampshire. Or head down. South? Head down. Yeah, yeah, let's head down. We are. Good Good geography, Rob. Geographying. Um, Hampshire, third last year. Um, I, they're a really good team. James Vince, the captain. Aidy Burrell, the coach. Um, they won the most games in Division One, but they also lost the most out of the top four, which just meant the title challenge obviously fell short. Um, it's all built on the Mohammed Abbas, Sean, no, Kyle Abbott. Get me Abbott's mixed up. Kyle Abbott and Keith Barker attack. That took 160 wickets between the, just the three of them. Rob, it's a ridiculous team attack. Um, and with the bat, they're a real team effort. Um, eight players scored in excess of 500 runs. Ben Brown, James Vince, top scored of 839. Nick Gubbins, someone we, we really liked a few years ago, uh, who's on the way back now after he's moved from Middlesex. Liam Dawson, Felix Organ, James Fuller, Keith Barker and Oakley Ian Holland, all in excess of 500 runs. That's a real team effort. Um, this year going forward, the retention of Kyle Abbott and Abbas is just a major coup. Um, and obviously aligned with Keith Barker, it's going to be their strength again. Uh, spin options, they've got Liam Dawson, they've got Mason Crane, the likes of that. There's enough there. Um, and when you look at the batting, James Vince, like we said, Gubbins, Brown, Anarin Donald, probable opening pair of Ian Holland and Felix Organ. It's going to be really interesting um, whether they can perform like they did again or if one or two of those really take that extra step up. Gubbins, could be, he's an easy 1,200-run man if he gets going. Uh, that's the sort of ability he has. Will Gubbins get a chance opening again? Does he want to open again? Um, it'll be interesting. Strength in depth. Talent both sides of the ball. It's 50 years since their last county championship win, Rob. Is now the time for them? It could well be. They're, mm. they're, they're the same but different to Essex. And that makes yeah. absolutely no sense. But <laughs> you look at it, the batting massively underperformed last year. If their batting had stepped up and performed as well as the bowlers, you're looking at the title winners. There's no two ways about it. Yeah. The top six averaged 32 last year, ranked 15th in the country particularly poor towards the end of the season where they averaged 21. No players averaged over 40. Lid, uh, James Vince led the way. And maybe barring T20 internationals and some ODIs, maybe, should be available for more of the season um, than, than he's not. Last year, they tried Weatherly and Holland at the top. I do think they've got a genuine issue at that top of the order. Who's mm. going to play there? I think Ian Holland's been released. But young Donald's the one that's come in. Spade of injuries. Um, county championship career of 30, but a strike rate of 73. Strike rate raised to 82 last year. And if it can develop and he can uh, keep growing and scoring some more runs, then he's the sort of guy that England and Basball would, would like to kind of caress. Someone really attacking just mm. needs to be able to score some more runs. But the reason they were at the top and the reason they won nine games was because of the bowling. Number one bank ranked bowling unit in the country, 23.27 average. Number one for strike weight with 48. Number two for economy rate. In, in Kyle Abbott, you've got a consistent world-class performer. 175 wickets at 18 since 2019. Year on year, gets it done. Keith Barker, X Rochdale, bats, bowl, does it all. <laughs> and no one has worked out how to deal with his in-swing in bowling for left arm, around the wicket coming back in. Mohamed Abbas, niggly, top of off stump, 17.62 average last year. The seamers alone averaged 21, so it doesn't really leave a lot left for a spinner to do. I think maybe they are a little bit light in the spin department, but they can absorb it because of the quality they've got with the seam attack. I've given them a batting good. It could, it could be better. They've got the players to be better. Um, ben Brown, uh, particularly, I think, is a, a wonderful player. Didn't quite have his best year last year. Pace, excellent. Doesn't get any better than that. And spin, okay. 
I think it, the bowling isn't the weakness. What they would no. like to do is is go with an okay bowling unit and just insert a, someone in the top six that's going to score twelve hundred runs. That's that's what they need to get across the line. Absolutely, absolutely. And, um, and when you've got a seam attack like they have, the spinner isn't always needed to be exceptional. It's somebody that needs to give control. Uh, an end whilst you're then rotating sp uh, seamers at times or resting certain seamers during the day. Um, it's interesting, Rob, that you mentioned about inserting somebody in that top six because that's the one to watch. It's Tom Prest. He's a 20-year-old. He's one of that many... There's so many of these under-19s that won the World Cup who are starting to coming through now. Um, he spent the winter away, um, I believe, England Lions, a um, bit of time in Sri Lanka. He's only played three first-class games so far, but given his opportunity in the top six or seven, he could be a breakout player for Hampshire this year. So Tom Prest, 20-year-old batsman. That's somebody we're saying to keep an eye on for Hampshire this year. That's cool. Let's head... Across the country. Oh, geography. geography. Kent, yeah, well, east of Hampshire. Uh, so, Kent, fifth division one last year. They had a really good year. I think everyone predicted last year Kent and North Ants, or maybe Gloucestershire, but Kent and North Ants are going to struggle. Kent did really well. Fifth in the league. Sam Billings um, is the county championship and T20 captain. Matt Walker is the coach. Uh, Paul Downton, director of cricket. Um, last year, so Ben Compton, that's the big name, wasn't it? We can't say anything about Kent without starting with him. Um, he went from almost a nothing player, no disrespect, he's got a famous royalty name in cricket, but he went from pretty much nothing. He came across from Nottinghamshire via a little bit of first-class cricket in Zimbabwe to basically England opener chat. He's still England opener chat. The cricketer, I mean, George Noble's talking about, or one of the cricketer writers is talking about, have we got the wrong Kent opener in England's side? That's another conversation. We don't want that today. Um, but he was prolific, wasn't he? Um, 1,193 runs, also hit 100 against the Touring Kiwis, did everything he possibly could to get himself pushed forward. He doesn't see that he's that close. He's only just really making a start, even though he is into his late 20s. Um, but that's the way it is. I was really, really pleased last year to see Daniel Bell Drummond had a, had a good year. 923 runs. He's had a bit of a sticky time of it um, in the last few years, but we're a big fan of him. I've always been a big fan of him, so it was great to see. Jordan Cox as well. He just fell short of the 1,000-run landmark as well, 917. He's a player on the up. Um, and we had an impressive young seamer, Nathan Gilchrist, took 33 wickets, team high for him. Um, and Matt Quinn, 30. Matt Milnes, who's moved on now, uh, he took 21 uh, before deciding he wanted to go to Yorkshire, which is a bit of a strange move for him, but bigger county, maybe he wants to be um, a little bit closer to home um, because he was another ex knots man. Uh, this year, this is post Darren Stevens' life begins, Rob. Um, although they have tried to counteract the average age drop by bringing in Michael Hogan, the 41-year-old from Glamorgan, um, it's kind of a comforting replacement, isn't it? He's, he's going to add a lot of experience to help this Kent attack through, especially at home where the batting was productive and bowling has been less so. Uh, they've lost a uh, young wicketkeeper batsman, Ollie Robinson. He's gone to Durham. Um, but when you've got Billings, Jordan Cox, really good bats, really good wicketkeepers, it made sense for Robinson, who wanted to keep to take the gloves um, on a full-time basis. So good luck to him. Um, Zach Crawley, he's going to be on Ashes duty, isn't he? But you've got seven weeks, seven rounds of county championship first to really make the most of Zach Crawley. And Zach Crawley and Ben Compton, if they can go off pretty well, that's going to be massive for Kent. And that could, that could be the difference between them staying up, mid-table, whatever it might be. It's still going to be a tough year for them. Um, they've also still got the likes of Joe Denley, Jordan Cox, we mentioned, Tawandi, uh, Miyai, uh, apologies for um, uh, uh, his name there. I think it's Miyai. Not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, don't let's not worry. He, he, he's going to be a good player. He's not going to worry about that. Um, Joey Everson as well. He's going to be a hit. We keep mentioning that Knotts link, but he's another man that's come across from Knotts. I was very disappointed about that. I think he's going to be a hell of a player, and he's probably going to be Darren Stevens in a way. Certainly the replacement in some forms of the games, in the shorter forms. He, hell of a player, but that's a real pressure uh, to live up to. And Nathan Gilchrist, obviously, good support coming in. Uh, I'm just going to rattle through the ones to watch, Rob. Um, Jordan Cox, we've already mentioned him, 22 year old. Excellent player already. 1,800 runs at a healthy average of 38 already. And it includes a high of 238 not out. This man can play. Um, potential, oh, I'm going to say it, basketball player of the future. And that man, Tawandi Muyai, 22-year-old again. Um, he was Wisden School Critic of the Year in 2020 and has every chance of becoming an excellent player. Uh, just the 414 runs, but still average of 30 in his, his first 10 games. So there is real talent there uh, in, in this Kent lineup. It's just whether or not they've got enough and enough players can perform at the right times. Mm. Mm, it is. The the top six average just shy of 40 last year. Um, third best in Division 1. Really good performance. They got promoted back 
2018, they got promoted. 2019, they finished fourth. Then we had a couple of skewy COVID years and they finished fifth last year. That's actually not a bad return for a uh, mm. for a team that spent a couple of years, I think it was, in Division 2 before they were back. You touch on Compton. He was so close to getting selected to England, I feel. Mm. He scored a shed loads of runs, but he fell off a cliff. He scored 150 yeah. runs at 15 in the last 10 innings of the year in July and September. Mm. And the runs that he scored were very measured and controlled because some of the other players in the team were struggling at the start of the years. He has gone away, he's scored more runs in the winter, he's gone to Zimbabwe, he scored a bucket load. So, mm. you know, more more power to him. Don't know if he'll be on the England radar. I don't quite see England wanting that type of opener, but I'll yeah. be interested mm. to see if he can come back and he's not just been here and then had a really big peak and then he's coming back down to where mm. his game naturally is. I think it's it will fall somewhere in the middle. Jordan Cox took on great year, real breakout season really. 2020, he scored 324 runs during that real shortened COVID season. Um, batted really well in that average 64, average 45 last year, a big 158 thrown into the mixer. So the, the, the batting's okay. And you add to that that Jack Leaning's probably a better player now than what he used to be when he was at Yorkshire. He's progressed. During his time at Yorkshire, um, I think he had about 80-odd innings and average 29, 30, mm -hmm. kind of middle-of-the-road sort of player. Since he's come to Kent, he's improved. 43 innings, sorry, 48 innings, averages 43. And he's had back-to-back 40-plus -back average seasons for the first time in his career. So nice. taking the next step and kind of falling into his role really nicely there. The bowling on the other end again particularly at the start of the season was terrible they they just couldn't get a wicket during those first few weeks of the season um and it was really poor the average 39 with the ball that's, that's a lot i know that from bowling that's a lot mm -hmm. lowest in d1 it improved during the season but the fact is the average 60 with the ball for the first two months of the year and you've already played seven mm -hmm. or eight games so you put yourself on the back foot so they've got to be able to bounce back carry the momentum over from July and September where they won some games and they bowled much better. Um, Milne's going is an interesting one, but Gilchrist is one definitely that is on the England radar. His yeah. strike rate is the thing that makes him unique. He's quite expensive. His economy mm -hmm. rate's over three and a half, but his strike rate's 40. Um, and for bowlers with 33 wickets, that's the third best in the country behind Matt Potts, who got an England call-up, and Overton who's mm. been used many a time um, there. They have a gap very similar um, to other teams in the spin department. Uh, Lind, 12 wickets at 61 last year. It's potentially troublesome. I've put the bat in as good. Question mark maybe overperform towards the end of next year. Mm. Pace, good. Gilchrist, good. Uh, you mentioned... Um, oh, okay. someone else. I can't remember it was off the top of my head. I've put good, but spin off oh. put poor. They've got a real gap there. They've got Hamid Quadri, who I may have pronounced wrong. Uh, I think he might have been injured last year, but he's going to be available this year by the sound of it. What can you do? You know, you know oh. it feels like a gap. I I feel the Stevens is a gap. I feel they've got a gap at spin, and I'm not I'm not confident that they're batting is really strong where you're going to see him averaging 40 out of top six unit. I think maybe that 30, 32 marks a ceiling, in which case the bowlers need to get him out of jam a few times to win. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how much Everson gets an opportunity in the four-day uh, game early yeah. on as well. He could be an exceptional player. He's certainly a, he's a much better batter than Knotts allowed him to be when he made his uh, a few appearances for Knotts. He was more a bowler, uh, but he's, he's an all-rounder. Simple as that. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they get the balance right. But um, they really struggled a few years ago, if you remember, them and Sussex. It was like they were loaning players left, right and centre. It just didn't feel yeah. like they could put a squad out or a team out, sorry, let alone a squad. Um, but they, they're, they're starting to rebuild, aren't they? So we kind of keep looking at them through that lens of they really struggled a few years ago. But they are developing and they, they, they deserve to stay in Division 1. So we're probably going to predict that they're going to be in for a relegation battle. But they'll be telling us, no, we're, we're fine. We're fine. We're better than you think. Overperform. The thing is, mm. if you win enough games, you're going to have a shout. And Kent mm. actually did that reasonably okay last year. They won four games. If you win four or five games a season, you're not getting relegated. So no. it's not always about drawing games and you know nipping the odd one. Four games, that's pretty decent performance. 
Mm, absolutely. And every opportunity for Zach Crawley to quieten down all these conversations about who's going to part the Ben Duckett uh, by scoring a hatful of runs. Right, Lancashire, Rob, we are most definitely travelling north now. Keaton Jennings, he that was probably a little bit um, unfortunate that he didn't get an England shout over the winter. Um, joined by Glenn Chapel as coach, obviously. Uh, last year, runners up for third time in six summers. Poor old bridesmaids, Lancashire. Uh, obviously, the nail biter picked by Surrey. Keaton Jennings, 1,233 runs, including 500s. Great summer. Um, shortcomings, if any, that they couldn't convert a few of those draws into wins. Um, something they'll obviously be wanting to change this year. Uh, Hassan Ali did really well, um, didn't he? But uh, he's moved on and big name incomings from New Zealand have arrived, Rob. The Grand Hom, the big man, Colin the Grand Hom, is coming in from the off. Um, Daryl Mitchell, fellow Kiwi, he's going to be joining in May the 11th. Um, and I think they've also uh, got Dane Villas as well as that third overseas player. Gives them plenty of options. Um, Mitchell especially, that could be huge, couldn't it, when he arrives? Just depends how much... Uh, cricket he gets and things change don't they when uh, when these ones are coming down the road uh, return this winter of Saki Mahmood is a massive massive boost uh, he was on the cusp of England stardom I would say uh, given the opportunity uh, before injuries uh, has set him back Matt Parkinson as well he seems I mean he seemed that he was on the verge wasn't he but then he, he seems now he's just miles away um, but he needs a good summer doesn't he uh, to keep going for and keep pushing his, his uh, England aspirations. Tom Hartley had a Lions winter, another solid spin option for them. And with the bats, apart from Jennings and the arriving Kiwis, they still boast Josh Bohannon, um, as well as that experienced duo of Stephen Croft and Luke Wells, some as, as well as some promising youngsters like George Lavelle. Um, so on paper, to the slightly untrained eye, they're, they're, they're an all right team, but they, they somehow know how to ground out results. And they've got some young players coming through. The one to watch, um, we'll speak about in a moment, Rob, after you've jumped in. but. Well, I, they, I struggle with Lancashire because uh, I'm flicking through the cricketer magazine. The front page is Lancashire, the team to beat. Are they? That's a, that's a, that's a fine question. They're going to be <laughs> there. Lancashire have been good. Yeah. Um, during my uh, extensive research since Ooh. 2000, they have either the top one or top two average position out of the 18 counties over mm. the last 22 seasons. So they're always... They're always going to win games of cricket, yeah. uh, particularly the early season when you've got some of those England players involved. Now, the top six was great last year. Um, the average 43.15, uh, the most tons out of the top six as well. And Keaton Jennings had essentially a career year. He had a big shift of technique from a particularly kind of stiff approach dropped his hands position down and that was all down to watching Matthew Hayden on Instagram. <laughs> he was watching some videos and was watching Hayden. We all should watch Matthew like, Hayden. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going to do a bit of that. And he definitely worked for him. The interesting thing is when you look at players, there's normally not a massive difference between failing uh, or the amount of times that a player fails. In the county championship, I think it's about 52% or 55% of scores are below 20 out of a top six player. Jennings was bang on that last year. The mm. only difference is what you do when you're in. That, that, is, that is the only difference between these top players. Mm. When they're in, they really make it count. And last year, Jennings, particularly for the first time in quite a few years, really made it count and looked a completely different player, just free of everything, in a much happier place, more content, he said he was, mm. um, rather than being a, in a world of stress, trying to work stuff out. And I can imagine mm. batting at a, a high standard can really be like that. You put him alongside Luke Wells, who had a career year. He went in average 52. Like, there's not a better opening partnership in the country that's consistently performing. You add to that that you've got someone like Phil Salt. Phil Salt is a sort of guy that you mm. could imagine England taking. They wanted to make Butler work in Test cricket for years. Now you've got a, a leadership crew with the right mentality around that type of player. Mm. You could imagine Phil Salt going, oh, OK, there's a genuine opportunity here for me to do, go and do that. Josh Bohannon's one of the best players in the country. Mm. He's been touring with the Lions. Didn't have the best year last year no. to back up the previous two years, but he still came away averaging 40. And Dane Villas is one of the best, if not under the radar, overseas players year mm. on year. Since 2017, he averages 40. Um, slower season last year, but offers huge amounts of benefits around leadership and the quality of the runs and when he scores the runs down the order when they're really in trouble. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mood, having him back's great. Parkinson's slower season last year was completely different to any season that he's had. He's been so consistent and so 
you look at the spinners in the county game that are English, and it's always been Jack Leach, Matt Parkinson, everyone else, like all the way down here. Last year, he dropped down there. Um, over the last two years, only his brother and Simon Harmer have got more wickets than him. So he's he's still got it, and you would expect him to come back. But I think what happened with him was he bowls slow. He genuinely bowls slow. And then he's got everyone telling him, well, you need to bowl faster. And he went from this guy, from my opinion, someone that was a massive turner, slow turn, but massive turner. And then you were watching him try and bowl eight miles an hour quicker, and it wasn't working. So I think there's just work to do there. My non-spin expert opinion, just saying what I'm seeing. Um, they'll be good. They're, they're, they're such a strong team. I've put bat in, excellent. Really, really good top six, like genuine top six. Pace, good. I think Daryl Mitchell's a good signing, but I would rather have Hassan Ali as my overseas bowler mm. trying to win me games. Uh, Daryl Mitchell's not going to tear anything up with his bowling. Very gentle mm. Um, part time, and I've put spin excellent. Parkinson, bad year, doesn't make him a bad player. He'll pounce back. Yeah, absolutely. So, one to watch George Bolton, another of the England under 19 um, kind of development crew, if you like. George, a 20 year old now, potentially be a very good bowling all rounder. 43 wickets at 33, um, 22 appearances and 620 runs at 24. Those averages are going to flip across, uh, no doubt in my mind at all. High score of 97 last year. If he's given the opportunity, he could rapidly progress for Lancashire. So, Middlesex, we're, we're going to kick off here with the first of the two newly promoted teams, Rob, runners up, Toby Roland Jones. He's the first class uh, only captain, not doing anything to the white ball. And Richard Johnson is the coach. Last year, brilliant summer, wasn't it, for Lord's uh, head headquarters? They, they finished behind a strong knot side, so I don't think they can be disappointed with not winning winning the league, but they had a really, really good year. Stable batting card, huge part of the success. Robson, Sam Robson and Mark Stone at the top of the order. Uh, the likes of Peter Milan, the South African, Steve Eskenazi, Max Holden, absolutely brilliant. And But John uh, John Simpson, excellent gloveman. He led the team with 1,039 runs last year, Robert, an average of 60-odd. Brilliant, brilliant year for him. Uh, with the ball, Toby Rowland Jones, skipper, he he, he led the uh, Division 2 with 67 wickets. Tim Murta, 30. Tom Helm, 29, also impressed. Obviously, Murta always impresses uh, when available, but Tom Helm, it's great to see him really getting back to uh, what we thought he could be. Uh, Mini Murta, Ethan Bamber, 25 and 38 for him. Get good support. Uh, lucky for the rest of Division uh, 2 last year, though, that Shine Sharif really wasn't available longer as he took 14 wickets and he just did three appearances at the start of the summer. This year, they've, they've still got Peter Milan. Um, he's returning and he's, he was going to be joined by Kashav uh, Maharaj, the South African spinner, but he ruptured his Achilles recently in a test versus West Indies, so that's the end of that, Rob. Uh, do you know how he ruptured his Achilles, Rob? Just a quick question. No, I don't. Celebrating a wicket. Mm -hmm. no. Lads, lads. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's interesting, though, because they've basically said that it, as a replacement, you think maybe they're going to go for like for like, but they have said uh, as a county that the only way they'll, they'll get another overseas spinner in is if it's one of that same quality and there's not that many around. Uh, they don't want to block the progress of some of their homegrown spinners like Leggy Luke Holman. Um, so it's interesting. It'll be really interesting to see what Middlesex do in that respect. Uh, one player that has returned home uh, after a long spell away at Gloucester is Ryan Higgins, uh, one of the finest county championship all-rounders. Um, England aspirations for the man. He wants to get, get in, uh, under the radar a little bit more. Uh, or on the radar a little bit more. And it's, he should slot in there at six or seven, maybe with John Simpson at seven, rounding out a really, really strong batting lineup. Bowling options, plenty. Toby Rowland Jones, as we said, Tom Helm, Murta, Ethan Bamba, uh, Blake Lund, as well as Spinners Holman and Tilan Walawalita. Um, the one to watch I'm going to chuck in here is Ethan Bamba. His stats in 2022 weren't as impressive on paper as he, maybe he would have liked, but he's a player of great promise. Still only 24 uh, and on the up as bowler. First class record to date, though, 125 wickets at 26.2 in 26 appearances. Really, really interesting uh, prospect, I think. I'd say so. Middlesex is such an interesting one. So they won the championship back in 2016, which seems a long time ago. Mm. Um, but the following season, they were relegated. Then they spent two years in Division 2, and then we had the two COVID years. So they finally mm. bounced back um, when they got relegated in 2017, and it's, it's taken the actual three years rather than five years. Mm. Division 2 was a strange season last year because um, it was a run fest, except for mm. Leicestershire. Six of the top <laughs> seven teams averaged over 40. Uh, Middlesex averaged 40.16. Stoneman had his first 1,000-run th uh, season since 2017. 
Um, and he's opening up in Division 1 alongside ex-England opener Sam Robson, who scored three centuries last year, and everyone went, oh, remember, Sam Robson's Ooh. a good player. So it gives them some really good stability mm -hmm. at the top of the order. Um, Eskenazi, three centuries. He's gone from good to great as of late, getting lots of white ball attention, playing around the world, looking really good. And John Simpson, uh, in, quite an incredible player, actually. The way he goes around scoring his runs, so free-flowing. Um, I don't want to use the Gilchrist analogy just because he's a wicketkeeper, but because he's left-handed and a wicketkeeper, I'm going to go and use it. Just the wow. way he goes about scoring his runs. He's quite free-flowing, not saying he's going to be the same as Gilchrist, definitely not. Um, <laughs> can they score runs? Yes. Yes, they can score runs. Um, they can score runs against Kent. They can probably score some runs against some other teams. But can they do it against Essex, Hampshire and Lancashire? That's mm. my question, Mark. Quite worried about what it's going to look like for them taking that next step up if they're going to be able to score enough runs to really challenge results. Um, bowling attack, second best bowling attack in Division 2 last year behind Knotts. Toby Rowland-Jones back to being fully fit and looking absolutely brilliant. Is a concern. He's been injured so many times. Is he going to be fit for the season? Can he make it through the whole season? Um, and I'm assuming Tim Murta is still kicking around at 40-odd mm -hmm. years old. I've not seen anything that says he's been released or he's retired or he's done any of these things. This is his first season back in Division 1 since 2017. That's a big leap to try and take, age 40-41, bowling 72 miles an hour. Ethan Bamber, this is going to be his first opportunity at playing Division 1 cricket. He's got a career average of 26 but he's going to be tested. He averaged 38 with the ball last year. Is he quick enough to go and make mm. an impact in Division 1? And I think you ran that together, and that's where the Higgins signing is such a good fit for them. He gives them mm. bowling. Yeah, he's not quick, but he picks up wickets, good wickets. He scores mm. runs, good runs. He's he's one of, if not the best all-rounder in the country in county yeah. cricket, really. The last four years, 2,000 runs, an average of 3490 Averages more than 30 every single month other than September, five centuries, mm. nine fifties. He's, he's class, he adds real good depth, and he's got 146 wickets at 25 in that time. So he's everything that this team's going to need. I've, I've read him in batting good, pace okay, spin kind of okay. A little bit worried about the legs in the team to be able to make it through mm. a full 14-game season um, with everything else that's thrown in the mixer along the way. Yeah, there were one of a few counties that just maybe lack a little pace. Don't know. They've got some good seamers, but it's just whether or not they, they need a little bit extra, extra something, a little bit of avavoom with with the uh, with the ball and attack. But uh, they're going to be a decent side, tough to beat, and they've got plenty of runs in them. So five teams down, Rich: Essex, mm -hmm. Hampshire, Kent, Lancashire, and Middlesex. Mm -hmm. Some interesting teams, some good batting units, some good bowling units. Yeah. Maybe one of those teams are good enough to go and win the league. But because of the length of the podcast, we're going to split this into two podcasts. So first five teams and rule changes in the first one and getting you back mm -hmm. up to speed. And then the second one, which will drop tomorrow. That'll be all around the next five teams. North Ants, not Somerset, Surrey and Warwickshire. Got some really interesting signings and some mm. really interesting teams going on there. Can't wait to get into it, Rich. Absolutely, yeah. And um, we'll do some predictions as well on that uh, second one. We've got to put our heads on the block, haven't we? Um, but yeah, really excited, as we said at the top, really excited to get this, this season underway. Um, and we'll wrap it up tomorrow. Yeah, can't wait. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Great to see you. Great to be back. Leave a big thumbs up or subscribe wherever you are listening. Any pro podcast platform, we are available. And we'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.